welcome to Next Economy Now. I'm Ryan Honeyman, a partner at Lyft Economy. Lyft is an impact consulting firm whose mission is to create, model, and share a locally self-reliant economy that works for the benefit of all life. The goal of this podcast is to highlight the leaders who are taking a regenerative, bioregional, democratic, transparent, and whole systems approach to using business as a force for good. My guests today are Alicia Kidd and Mari Kemp, co-founders of the Coco Noir Wine Shop and Bar in Oakland, California. Alicia and Mari, welcome to the show. Welcome. We're happy to be here. Alicia, maybe we could start with you. Could you tell us a bit about your, your background and how you first got interested in the work that you're doing today? Yes, there's a, I'll tell the short version. So um, my passion and love affair with wine started maybe 10 years, 10 to 15 years ago as a consumer. Um, fast forward to about 2016, um, as, a side, as a side hustle, I started um, just working for um, a more boutique winery as a wine sales ambassador. From there, I also partnered with another woman-owned, minority-owned import company and became an ambassador. So I was selling part-time as a wine ambassador, working for Biopic, uh, representing Biopic and women makers into the marketplace. So my love affair turned into wanting to explore this as a business. Um, I did some apprenticeship as well as working. And then from there, just created a a business um, called The Wine Noir, which is still in existence. And we focus on biopic and women winemakers in the area of um, distribution, wholesale, importing and exporting and consulting. Um, And then which led me to partnering with, um, wanting to have a retail wine shop and also to have partnership in this new venture with great friends. And um, from there, Mari can tell her story. Definitely. So for me, I have been a wine enthusiast for years. Um, I can think 20, 20, 25 years back, always being that consumer going to, you know, different vineyards and wine producers and tasting different wines. And for me, it was a power shift to go from being a consumer to an owner and creator. Um, And I'm excited to be able to bring something like this to our community, especially representing those who are underrepresented. Um, I've been in the executive space for over 20 years and uh, still in tech and and running an organization now, but being able to have this passion as a part of something I'm doing for the community, for the people, and partnering with Alicia is something I'm super excited about. That's amazing. And I love the multiple side hustles. Like, is the tech the side hustle or is this the side <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> Depends on the day, I'll tell you that. Yeah. But... <laughs> I hear you. Um, so what, tell me a little bit about, so how did the idea to actually create a physical location and start to, tell me about the sort of genesis of how that came about. Maybe Alicia, if you want to speak to that. Yeah, so um, in my current business, the Wine Noir, it, I also represented, I acquired um, brands um, working with winemakers, biopic and uh, women brands, both internationally and locally to also be their, be their, become their sales arm. So through attending a lot of events, partnering with corporations and, and um, giving them wine experiences and also partnering with um, people in the chef and event space. Um, I amassed a Rolodex of a few thousand um, followers and subscribers and locally. And a lot of them would say, when are you going to have a wine shop? You know, we love these wines, you know, and these wines are amazing. We just, we would love a physical space. So from that, um, I, again, Mari knows this, just we, we, our friendship is around wine. That's part of it. So we wanted a space that was inclusive diverse to all, to everyone, and that it just gave a different twist. So that's how Coco Noir was birthed out of the demand from the community of Oakland, as well as our um, community from other states, Um, our virtual community as California being one of the largest wine hubs. And so we wanted to make Oakland that, that stop before you go to Napa and Sonoma. 
here in the Bay Area. So that's where it was birthed and um, this, the, our community has supported thus far. And we'll talk about that later in the interview. So that's how it was founded on my end. And um, I think from my perspective, when Alicia presented this opportunity, I'm a little bit of, I haven't talked about the other side hustle, but I love real estate and I'm an investor and I love flipping and rehabbing and interior designing. Uh, and so the idea of wine plus real estate, interior design space, all about that. So um, it was a natural win for me and I love building and starting projects from beginning to end. So naturally this all came together. That's great. And a founder, I like starting projects and then not finishing them. So uh, I'm glad to hear that you have to follow through. <laughs> yes. um, so, uh, and there's also a new, I believe there's a new black arts and business district, or is it new or a, can you talk about the district they're building in Oakland? Yeah. So that district has been landmarked by um, former um, city councilwoman Lynette Malcohaney. Um, I think it was um, landmarked in around 2015, 2016, and it's 14th and Webster, and we're adjacent on 13th and Webster. So we're adjacent, but we're considered, and there's Black-owned businesses in that community. Um, the current city council who was just elected, uh, what we plan, so there are African-American-owned businesses, and downtown Oakland has become gentrified. But our motto is that we want to work with the other businesses in that area to revitalize it. So it is a landmarked area, the Black Arts um, Business Movement District. And there we, we are engaging with them and we'll have, you'll probably see more of that presence in 2021. But yeah, um, we're here to revitalize that community as well as partner with the existing businesses. There's art galleries. There is a social club. There's also other brick and mortar businesses in that area. Thank you. And maybe, um, I don't know if either of you want to speak to the, the raising capital piece. So maybe how much are you trying to raise? Um, and, you know, I, I mentioned, I, I know they're doing something on WeFunder and maybe if you want yeah. to throw out the link in any promo, but yeah, just want to give folks some insight on the, on the capital side. Yeah, I think um, just to kind of start it, just to back up a little bit, just about the why of crowdfunding, you know, initially it was, we could do this project, but let's open this up to the community. Let's get partners involved and at the same time, creating investors. So um, crowdfunding, a lot of people aren't familiar with it. And so there's also been a nice educational opportunity for us in this process, but it's an opportunity to create investors in what we're doing and how, and we're doing a profit sharing model um, in doing so. And so we always have to bring up the, the differences between GoFundMe versus crowdfunding. GoFundMe, you never quite know where your money is going. Whereas with crowdfunding, um, you actually know that you're an investor. You're, you're now our partner. We are, when we gain revenue, you grow revenue. And so it's, a, or you gain profit. So it's, it's a really nice circular process of being able to build an investor community around this project and so you have that buy-in those stakeholders always involved which is something we're excited about and it keeps our feet to the fire as well um, but most importantly right now we are raising uh, 1.7 million so far in the last two and a half months we've raised 72,000 so we're doing really well and we're just continuing the momentum and appreciating the support we're getting from the community. And for those investors, there's tremendous perks. And if you go to our WeFunder page and look up Coco Noir, you will see all the perks listed on the side. And, um, but essentially it's two times the revenue. And um, it's, it's something that we're excited to have new investors and partnerships in doing this project. Alicia, you wanna add anything to that or? Yeah. and. And Madi, she took everything, I, what I was going to say, but even more in alignment um, with your organization, we do plan on becoming B Corp certified, but we're already, um, even before going through that process, we, from a wine perspective, we are given, we, we deem it the, I call it the new wine economy. So I'm, I'm taking a little bit of the, the, the new economy, but we're creating um, diversity and inclusion and social impact in three economies, which is the wine the food and the tech economy, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, we're creating synergies um, 
economic development with winemakers of color biopic we're also exposing and giving um upliftment as well as um um, upliftment to biopic and women winemakers to say a white wine audience that will never know that there is women producers um, minority producers um, so that that's it's it's amazing on that end and so I really love the diversity that it's including all of everyone in the industry and giving everyone the opportunity to have an equitable share in the billion billion dollar wine industry and just for listeners, uh, biopic meaning Black, Indigenous, and other people of yes. color? Okay. Cool. Yes, I should have said that, yes. It's Sorry. all right. I've, uh, yeah, a lot of folks say BIPOC and then POC, but yeah, this, I think that's great for, I like, I like biopic better. Um, <laughs> or BIPOC. And, be yeah. Um, and then, so can you talk about um, the, how you thought about, you know, a virtual, the sort of like, there's a lot of businesses going virtual now and you're going towards a physical location. Can you, t- you talk about the, the balance that you thought about? Like, how does that, how have you been thinking about the, the importance of a physical versus a, a online only business? I don't know if maybe Madi, you want to speak to that or? Sure. Um, so online is part of what we do. So we have identified six streams of revenue uh, for Coco Noir. The storefront essentially being that flagship location that everyone would go to and the fact that we're located within a brand new uh, apartment high-rise building downtown Oakland. We have the natural energy coming from the residents in that building and local businesses around. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, we have five areas that we've identified we're going to be generating revenue. So right now as we speak, even though our location is not there, uh, or we do have it, sorry, we're finishing up the build out now. <laughs> um, we are already doing virtual tastings for people and organizations. And so far th- that has been a hit, huge success going on there, as well as online wine sales as well. And the beauty of what we're doing is, is our online wine sales, they're not the, the types of wines you're gonna find at BevMo. They're different they're they're with that culture that underrepresentation is bringing forth things that you wouldn't find on the everyday which differentiates us from any of the wine.coms the webmos etc the vino um dot com and things like that so um with what we're doing there's just multiple streams and so not necessarily getting locked in to just the storefront um the storefront location is definitely with the mentality of community bringing people together um, at some point, critically and psychologically, people still need social connection and human connection. We can only go so long, mental health perspective wise, um, in this very secluded state. So we do hope to be a, um, a place that brings that community, that culture, the arts, the wines all together in the actual space in Oakland, California. I love it. And yeah, Alicia, anything to add on that one? Yeah, and then also, um, as Oakland will be the flagship, we also have had um, interest in expanding to other states where it's very multicultural, very urban um, community airport. So we we have a big, a, a really great model, which is all on our WeFunder page. We also um, have, we will be launching a mobile app, which is in addition to our robust e-commerce site, our mobile app will serve. It's going to be the epicenter for women and um, diverse winemakers and small local winemakers that they will have that it's going to be an amazing. So we have B2B, B2C, mobile app, e-commerce, flagship store of Oakland. And um, we also, the great thing is we've attached an eatery to that um, location and we're partnering with local chefs in the community we have outdoor seating so it's a win-win and i think that you know again wine sales and beer sales are continuing to grow and um you know with the hopes of what's going on in 2021 we hope to come out victorious and um yeah and share this with the community did you you know i'm really interested if you could maybe help flesh out like one of these women of color winemakers or give me a story about like one of the people you're really excited about that maybe the listeners wouldn't know about like what's their story and like their wine and you know why you why you like it or something like 
if you so locally um one that i can and we're actually doing a wine event with her we have weekly happy hours her name is paula harrell and she is a local san francisco bay area um, resident P. Harrell Wines, and um, she's in several restaurants, but she's a small producer. She's known for her Zinfandel. She's an African-American woman winemaker, and she makes an amazing Zinfandel as well as a Riesling, and then she has a Rosé. So she will be one of our makers that, again, we're giving um, our presence to. She's already established, but she's not known to many. And so giving her the same Um, you know, opportunity in our retail platform. So that's one. From an international perspective, I just came back from South Africa in March, right before um, COVID, um, you know, the shutdowns. And prior, um, I had just, I had always had international brands in my portfolio. So Brazilian and South African. So Seven Sisters is one brand. It's a um, Black women's um, sisterhood collective. They own a vineyard and their um, vineyard producers. So we will be having their wines. They have two brands, Seven Sisters, and then their higher brand, which is the Brutus um, brand, which is their last name. And so we will have South African, which South African is, South African region is the 10th largest wine producing region. And there are over a hundred black South African wine producers starting. And so we'll have a few of those. Um, We're also gonna have some other brands. So those are two Seven Sisters, and P. Harrell, who's local, different, but they need support. And so we're creating this South African to California roadmap and economy and social impact. And then from San Francisco to Oakland, which is right around the corner, but we're giving, we're going to be the first type of business that's going to offer a retail platform, an e-commerce platform, and a mobile app platform for B2B and B2C. That's unheard of. Madi, any um, any other stories or anything else to add on that? No, I mean, I think um, every since we've sort of started this initiative, we have been uh, tapping more into specifically um, women-owned and Black-owned uh, vineyards. And I was already drinking Brown Estates, but I've fallen in love with the Zinfandel uh, right here in the Bay Area, which is exciting and um there's a lot more i know there was one that um i've liked more more recently alicia you might remember the name with the um had like a little bit of brandy in it <laughs> i'm trying to remember the name off the bat it's, i think it's out of france what is the name of it um pinot it's pinot de Chiron. and so that's a smaller brand in france um we just also interviewed um phil long who's another he's an african-american vineyard owner in livermore so he's one of the, he's the second largest winemaker for African-Americans in the United States. So that's another one that we'll have in our wine shop. And you'll see that on our, on our social media platforms rolling out next week of the interview series that we, um, we have with him on Coco Noir Wine Shop on all of our social media channels. Yeah, and I will say, um, just in light of, you know, launching and coming up with Coco Noir, the community is so strong and there's so many out there that we never would have thought were there Mm -hmm. and bringing that exposure, even to us in this process, I think that's the most fun that we're having is is trying the wines and being able to meet these producers and partner with them. We're talking to people in Detroit, we're talking to people all over the U S and, you know, Georgia meeting with some people actually today. Um, There's just so many, um, underrepresented groups that you would never think of looking at that wine list when you go to a restaurant and it really takes your mind out and and so why diversity is so important is the question and when you taste the wines you taste the difference yes. so it is critically important and Marty, could you speak to the um just giving listeners a, a like what does the industry look like i mean i imagine it's probably a bunch of white guys, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just looking at like general wine industry, but what is like the state of black ownership or, you know, in the different areas, is there like good representation on the winemaker side and the dist- dist- distributor side, or I'm just kind of curious for the, the current state of ownership uh, in the. I, in the yeah. Industry. I mean, there's, there's not a lot out there, but it is definitely growing now uh the the exposure is happening i would even say during covid a lot of entrepreneurial 
entrepreneurs and creators are coming out of this, which is even more exciting. But in the actual, if we just were to say black owned specifically, it's not many, um, but they are increasing. And Alicia, I know you probably know the stats better than I do. Uh, but, you know, being able to, the, the, re, the good thing about it, though, is that the exposure to these few, not many, Black-owned vineyards, it, they're really starting to get it. Like we were, again, as Alicia said, we were just with Phil Long at Longevity Wines in Livermore, and he is just busy. I mean, <laughs> because everyone's like, what is this all about? We didn't even know. And now everyone is just flooding these, these producers and these, um, these owners um, heavily with looking to taste their wines, to be a part of them, to partner with them, to really bring them up, which is really exciting to see um, the arms of the wine community embracing these organizations as well. Yes. And from the distribution, or I'll just say ownership side, um, as well as makers. So I see more winemakers coming out of this. So there are more African American and African and Black um, identifying makers coming out of it, but on the ownership side, it's slowly growing due to the point of entry, the cost. Um, I'm licensed in um, the wine noir, and how the wine noir will play with Coco Noir is that um, we're, my company will do a lot of the importing and distribution for our company. So um, I am licensed in all areas and that's rare. It is a very expensive business you do. Um, so I have to run my business in segments. And so from that end, I do see a small growth of women and um, diversity, diverse owners coming in. I do consulting. So I do consult up and coming and um, business owners or existing business owners in diversity, supplier diversity, as well as launching and growing your business and with winemakers. So I do see that growing. And so um, with that being said, I've learned a lot. And um, I think our bit, what us being owners in the industry actually is putting a twist on things because we now get to make the hiring decisions, the major decisions. And we come, we approach our winemakers as partners. You know, we try, we work with their pricing. There's going to be a lot of things for that social impact and that equi the sustainability of the wines of how we do business is going to be in alignment with our mission. And, you know, maybe just thinking about COVID, for example, how have mm -hmm. you seen that from the start to today? How has, how has COVID affected how you think about your business or opportunities or um, yeah, I'm just kind of curious how COVID has affected, has affected what you do. Um, yes. I, well, I will say COVID definitely threw us all in a place of just ambiguity of mm -hmm. not knowing what's next, but we are wonderful human beings and we all have adapted. And, um, I would say the opportunity has only increased because now we're able to do more virtual conversations, whereas Prior, there was more expectancy to do more, you know, let's come to my vineyard and let's talk. Now we can do things via Zoom. Um, it allows, and it actually really stepped up the exposure for virtual wine events. There's so many people who's like, what's a virtual wine event? What is, you know, that curiosity has increased and people are becoming more um, comfortable with video, um, especially with COVID than the face-to-face. -face. So it's allowed us to create so much more partnerships, conversations, and discussions from the um, our homes and our own Wi-Fi's. Uh, so it's it's been really nice. It's it's been a nice transition. But I, I will admit, I know for me, it was like, what in the world? How are we going to do the storefront? Yeah. And it makes so much sense because why not? And and we're starting to see. And just thinking about other entrepreneurs during this time, you know, when you when there's that that rose that comes out of the crack of the ground, I think there's a nice photo of that. That's exactly what's happening now. People are coming out. It's forcing people to think about multiple streams of income. It's, it's forcing people to think about um, their passions and tapping in because they're at home. Um, they're in their homes. And so it's creating and forcing creativity. So we're seeing a lot of entrepreneurs coming out of COVID, which is really exciting. And so we have a lot of partners and people who can talk, we can talk to who relate to our story. And so we're not alone in this as a result of COVID and, we're, and it's forcing us to build those connections. 
And then we've also we've also been able to raise capital during COVID. So that's number one. Even though traditionally 50% of African American businesses have been impacted and have closed, um, with that being said, we are one of those business models that that's where the technology comes in. That's where we're we are going to have our e-commerce store. We're we're having our mobile app um, where we can grow our audience even 10 times the normal foot traffic. Um, we're also um, just adhering to here in California, you know, we've been very much adhering to a lot of the COVID um, standards. So we'll definitely take that into consideration. But also with our support, we have the um, mayor of Oakland that supported us. Um, we have, we're members of the Oakland African American Chamber as well as the Oakland Metropolitan Chamber. So we have a big community following and investment and we're going to ride this wave. So I think that we're pivoting in a sense of that our model could run if we needed to go into shutdown, you know, and then we can open right back up, which I really, I think that's unheard of with any other type of business that we in this industry, I've never heard of that, so. And what have you been seeing with, um, you know, with sort of the protests? I mean, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, how has that um, sort of impacted, you know, maybe the visibility of what you do? I, like, I guess I'm, af- I'm afraid of um, like the sort of white folks who want to sort of make a token par- partnership, you know, yeah. like, oh, and that, you know, how is that like played out at all? Well, actually, our lead investor is Arno Hesse. So okay. from Food Funded. OK, so he I've known him for some years through another friend of mine who um, he supported. But um, when I reconnected with Arnold when presenting this opportunity in the Food Funded and Slow Money family, um, he is one of our supporters that believed in us. Um, mentored us, you know, and so I think we're very lucky in that we, our white allies have been very supportive. Um, and we are very, one thing about being born and raised in the Bay Area, we meet a lot of people that are already open. So with, of course, the Breonna Taylor and George Floyd has taken an impact on both of us, you know, just really seeing that. But out of that, you know, we've met a lot of people and it shows in our portfolio it shows in our campaign within the first six weeks we've raised for a black owned company to raise close, you know, a little bit under a hundred thousand in six weeks, you know, is amazing. So I think that we've already had a wine economy, a, a, a black or a diverse wine economy. I just think now everyone is catching on and we're going to continue this momentum beyond and the black lives, black business matters movement is going to always be like, not a trend. And I think with this new administration, there's going to be a lot of things that we're holding them accountable. So I think we're in a good position and food, wine, and art and culture, I think is a great way to start the conversations of race, you know, to talk about those things, the social justice cost issues that impact us all. And Marty, I'm not sure if you want to jump in at all or no, I think um, Alicia definitely said it all. We've it's it's we're a human business, and we're highlighting the the we're, what we represent as Black women, and I'm actually Black and Latina. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's all about culture and re- reminding people why diversity is important. And I think for us, this journey alone is just super empowering, just because this is you know there is no footprint. We're creating this on our own, and the community has embraced us. And, you know, I know I, I, we don't look at white as evil or it's, it's actually a community and, and we've seen love from all areas. And, you know, and I think that's, that's one thing that is beautiful about when people rise to the level of understanding that we're all humans and we're just highlighting what, who we represent and where we come from as women as as also black and latinas so it's it's just a nice thing that we're just doing our part to put forth where we're from and what we represent and to see the community of all colors come forward and embrace that is is something that we deeply appreciate thank you one other um question is how do you know how does things like you know wine critics and you know, how does that play into the sort of like 
how women of color get like surfaced and elevated in this space? You know, like what what are some of the the ways that um, you know there's either blocking or or sort of assistance yeah. with you know folks? Yeah. Well, I am so glad you asked that question because um, the wine our wine partners um, have wines that have been highly rated through Wine Spectator, Wine Enthusiast Magazine, Psalm Journal, um, the Napa Valley, San Francisco, Livermore, those publications and those governing bodies. So there are, we're going to already have those diverse winemakers that have already been highly rated and well-respected. Um, but also part of the work that I do in my other business, as well as with Coco Noir, is that we have partnerships and alliance ships with these organizations. So for example, we're part of the African American, uh, African American Vintners Association. And so we have a partnership with Wine Enthusiast Magazine and we're ho- we've been doing projects with them and working with them on a multitude of projects to help them diversify. Um, also, I'm um, just, you know, working with different schools. There's a lot of programs out there um, with the wine schools to offer scholarships to incoming people of color and women that want to get into the industry as psalms. And so that is changing um, how wine is rated. It's not going to be about the color or that negative mindset of because that person is not of color that they can't produce. No, it's going to show, no, this person is a wine maker. Their wine should be submitted for, for rating and it should be judged as so. So we're, we're not just a business that is providing wine. We're also working in this whole ecosystem of changing the landscape um, of how critics. So our community is going to be made up of diverse songs, diverse wine writers. We have a friendships with a lot of people, not just in California that have, that know about us. Are either of you, um, Somalia, like the master Somalis or anything like that? Well, I'm in school right now for oh, wow. my W set and I have taken some, I, I attended San Francisco wine school and I started the SOM program, but I had to stop, but I, I have wine education. Madi and I are both going through the process, but um, yeah, so as we're owners, there's the business side, but then there's the service. So for us, we just need the more of the business. Um, but yes, I, I'm going through that. She's going through that. So we'll probably just go at a certain level. But yeah, we can do some blind tasting. <laughs> right. Yeah, I just saw the Netflix movie a few years ago and was really Song, yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. It's like this one was from the western part of France and like I don't know. It's it's crazy what <laughs> how much they can know about a wine. Exactly. Um, and what are you uh how are you balancing the sort of there's the um biopic sort of ownership piece, representation piece, and also like how are you thinking about the environmental, like if there's any organic wines or you know, that that sort of part of the uh business. Any thoughts on on that? Mm -hmm. I'll jump in on the organic wines. I am super passionate, just how we eat. Um, You know, we we buy organic. So naturally being able to offer organic wines is definitely top of my list, uh, just because it's it's sustainable and it's conscious. And I know how it feels when I drink regular wine versus organic wine the next day. Um, when there's a lot of pesticides. And so having that level of consciousness is definitely um, a piece that we will be bringing to the table, not saying everything will be organic. Um, but it's interesting, we did a, uh, we will have our own Coco Noir wine and we're pretty excited about that. But learning things like ice and glass is in the wine um, that makes it inorganic or vegan, or some ha- use um, egg whites as a coag, as a protein, uh, right. balance in their in their wines is it's like wow well, this is deep and you know being able to answer those questions to our consumers uh, to our buyers to our partners and being able to offer the differences those who are, who are vegan and want to come in and shop with us having that level of awareness and sustainability and sensitivity um, so we definitely want to make this available to everyone and with a high level of consciousness around what we sell is is definitely something that's important to us in our brand and our value. 
And then also yeah, too, when it comes to sustainability, majority of our wines will, I will say 90 plus percent will be sustainable. Um, also just a little bit of background in the wine industry. A lot of wine brands would like to be organic, but the cost to the grower is super expensive here in California, particularly. So they're not going to be certified organic, but they will be sustainable and how they pick the wines, how they, before it gets to barreling. So it's very sustainable in that they don't use pesticides, um, the types of sugars they're using. So it's a lot of things that a lot that goes into the winemaking process that yes, we will have um, certified vegan wines, but if they're not vegan, they will be sustainable. And most of your international wines um, that we will, that you've seen, a lot of them already have very, very, they even have more stricter, um, they're more strict than your California, but California has a lot of sustainable wines and we will make sure um, I will say this, the difference between vegan and non-vegan is that the life. So hopefully we will have, we will have those vegan and natural. You will probably pay a little bit more because the shelf life of those are, it, you know, it goes, but we definitely want to represent all diverse audiences health wise. And from a environmental standpoint, yes, sustainability is number one. Number two, we're also um, working directly with the winemaker going to those farms you know, so we're, we're working with um, women winemakers, women farmers, black farmers. Um, we're going to partner with um, the Mexican American Vintners Association, Black Farmers Association. So it goes beyond the environment as well as the economic part of it, because there's a whole supply chain, a whole life cycle. So definitely is our mission. So we plan to have about 200 150 in the store and maybe a little bit more online when it comes to our portfolio, but we're definitely given equity, um, sustainability as well as helping out farmer underrepresented farming groups with our direct financial involvement of purchasing from them. Maybe each of you can answer this question, but what are you most excited about right now? Is there a particular this, I guess this would be personal or professional, but just <laughs> Felicia, you want to maybe take it first and then. Yeah, I'll just sum it up where I'm just excited because um, I think this is, this is going to be the, one of the unique and first concepts that will allow and that goes in line with inclusivity and diversity, having a space where you can just enjoy wine and not feel like you, you're, you have to have wine etiquette and just really giving culture back to the community of Oakland. And we're gonna come out of COVID and this is a great opportunity to, to, to open a business like this that is giving people community to be free and to, to have good libations, great food, great conversation. And then out of that may come some more entrepreneurs or more ideas and thoughts, so yes. Yeah, for me, it's, it's it. It's a fun journey. I thrive in being uncomfortable, to be honest with you. So being able to uh, bring a wine organization or um, location storefront to a community that I'm pretty passionate about, you know, born and raised native San Franciscan, uh, but had been in Oakland for over 20 or so years. It's, it's fun. The wine tasting, the, the moments of what in the world is going on, um, the moments of who, who are we going to partner with for this? All of those things are indications of the fact that I'm living. And uh, being able to go through this journey is exciting. And being also um, completely open to share the journey with others so that they can do it too. Uh, there's a share point here as well that I, I really like to push and tell the story, I'm not trying to keep it a secret. We want more entrepreneurs. We want more representation. And we have to start doing it by building and sharing the stories. So for me, it's fun. It's busy. I think it's probably the most work I've ever done probably in the last six months, <laughs> um, just with everything that I have going on. But there is a thrill and passion. And, and Alicia and I, I, I think as well, our friendship has gotten stronger because we have to trust each other in this process. We're and married. Um, we're married. Couples. Yeah, we're pretty much married couples. We, we talk every day. <laughs> if not a few times a day, we you know, some days we get frustrated with each other. 
some days we just love each other. It just really right. depends. But um, that journey is, it, it is what it is. And, and to be able to do it with a partner that um, you trust and with someone who wants the same thing. And, and so when we have our damn day, down days, we pick each other up. It's, it's great. It's just, it's a good, it's a good passion and exercise to move towards. So it's, it's a lot of fun, just the whole process in itself. I love that. I, I, yeah, I definitely know the the founder relationship can be make or break. So, you know, mm-hmm. just to hear that you all, and like, not that it's supposed to be all rain, rainbows and unicorns, like all the time, but you know, right. to have that trust, that baseline connection and trust, that sounds amazing. Yes. Mm-hmm. I am curious, um, what are, uh, what are the top two to three sort of challenges or what, what sort of keeps you up at night? Like, Ooh, if we don't solve this, it's going to be a problem. Like I'm kind of curious, what, what are like the main things you're sort of thinking about or up against? I think we're thinking about, of course, raising, hitting our capital raise goal. Of course, we're self-funding this along the way. Um, again, we do think about COVID, you know, we're always thinking about that. And just are we, and I will say this is a challenge, but it's also an opportunity of, will this be, I think we know it's going to be successful, even if it doesn't, but also just the, this is both of our first um, ventures in this. We're both entrepreneurs. Um, We have a lot of experience that will run a successful business, but just running this type of a business in the brick and mortar, just will we be successful? Like those fears, that's on my end. What about you, Madi? Yeah, you know, I think the first thing that popped in my mind was just vendors and partnerships, making sure we partner and are the people that work with us are the right people. Uh, because we have our close knit, we trust each other. But you know, when you open it up to, um, you know, subject matter experts, making sure they understand who we are, our brand, being able to drive it forward, and speak to it how we do. And so um, even with people who are doing the construction on our building, all of those things. I mean, you have to rely on a nice, tight-knit community. So um, that sometimes keeps me up at night, making sure we have the right people, the right partners in place. Um, COVID is just, you know, the ambiguity of not knowing who would have thought, you know, seven months ago that we'd be in the situation, but we are. Uh, but at the end of the day, what keeps me alive is just knowing that human humans will prevail, prevail, will adapt. And there's just fundamental needs that need that require us to be alive. And it's, and it's something that we're providing um, a demand that I feel it will be needed over time anyway. And that, that place where people can get together and have that community. So, you know, sometimes I go down that hole, there's that low vibration where I think about all the things I could be wrong and then I have to sort of pick myself up and go on a higher vibration and think of all the things that can go right. So it's it's constantly fighting and building that ebb and flow and that balance. Yeah, it's almost like 2020's wild as F. <laughs> so why not? Let's just yeah. launch a business. Like, you know. Exactly. Um, I mean, in many ways, it's um, I, th- I think it's like the perfect time to do what you're doing um, because Definitely. things are changing so much. So. Um, yeah. What, what about, um, you know, maybe moving to like, what do you need right now? Cause we often ask our, our guests, you know, how can listeners support you? Obviously, you know, we funder, but other ways like, yeah. How would you answer that question? Uh, I would say a few ways, um, yeah. market us, you know, just share, share what we're doing, who we are and how we're doing it know that this is a human business. We are, we want community. We love the love that we're getting already. And we want to extend that uh, across all racial territories, just to humans in itself. And because we want to take the opportunity to bring the culture of what we bring to the community, what we brought to this, this world in itself and highlight it. And um, it doesn't necessarily exclude any one person, uh, but it's something that speaks to us, our passions that we want to bring forward. So market, talk about us, um, become our business partners, invest in us. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to do it. I mean, you can start with $100 uh, just to come in and just see and watch the journey, see the videos, join, uh, or, or definitely leverage us for one of our virtual tastings. There's just, or buy wine from our website. There's so many ways to do it. 
um, or just set up a call with us and talk to us about our journey. Happy to do that. Happy to speak on, on any media platform and, and share the story because we're learning and anything, and if someone who's done this before wants to call us and say, hey, I think you should do this, we're all ears and open for it. So we're coming from a very humble, passionate place. And we know for a fact, it's a people business. Every business is a people business. It's gonna take us together collectively as a community to really launch this and be successful. So just get our name out there, talk about us and, and also reach out to us. I think that's, that's basic things we would love from, from people. And Alicia, anything else? Uh... She said it all. She named um, a lot. That was good. Yes. Well, <laughs> I, well, and again, it's, I think that, um, again, sharing, you know, if you love wine and you want to support this new wine economy, um, we've made our investment super affordable. We have different tiers. There's perks. Our customers, we have over 130 supporters already, and it's growing. And so with that being said, you know, um, we're, we're making it, we're changing the industry. We're the first of color that I know that's actually um, doing this type of model, this social impact model in the industry of hospitality within the Bay Area. And um, we've had the most traction and we won't be the last. So this is the first of many. We are a startup. We do hope to grow into other locations and just, you know, I just say share, learn more about us at um, coconoirwine.com and go to WeFunder and type in Coco Noir Wine Shop and Bar. And um, yeah, and we partner with WeFunder, their major contributor. We kept it local. This is a local company platform. And um, yeah, we're excited to bring um, wine diversity into the landscape of a growing, I mean, wine is a billion dollar industry and it's continuously growing and any uh social media handles or anything you want to throw out yes so um all of our social media is coke um coco noir wine shop coco noir wine shop twitter linkedin instagram youtube facebook yes. i love it don't have to change on each platform but yeah <laughs> that's right and maybe um one one last thing is is there a particular wine, you know, maybe both you can that you're really feeling right now? Like, what is your favorite wine that you're maybe you're maybe you're selling just so folks get a sense of if they wanted to go online and get a, a wine from you? What would they, you know? Yes. What would they look so for? I like. Um, well, I'm going to plug our wines that I have um, flow. It's called For the Love of by Marcus Johnson. And it's a California produced wine. And Marcus is um, an African-American wine producer and jazz pianist. Um, Grammy nominated uh, NAACP awardee and he also has a Pandora channel and basically it's a red blend um, of um, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, very very good and some other blends in that and then we also have a really good Chardonnay in that line so it's called Flow for the Love of. It's one of our brands. And um yeah, what I'm drinking these days, actually, okay, yesterday, uh, McBride Sisters Black Girl Magic Riesling yeah. is yummy, mm. yummy, yummy, yummy. They have amazing um, options of different wines. They have their Rieslings, they have their whites, they have their, their rosés, just good stuff. Uh, so right now I'm there and, and it's really good. Oh, I can't, I can't forget uh, Longevity Wines. Yes. Uh, they have uh, really good Zins um, and they have a special, uh, they have a special uh, brand. I think it was called the, the Journey, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that, that is just delicious. So Longevity and Livermore right there in the Bay Area, uh, definitely some good stuff. And, and we were drinking that actually just last week. So um, those are the two I would highly recommend. Great. All right, folks. So listeners, you got to go check out Coco Noir Wine Shop and Bar on WeFunder and invest for as little as 100 bucks. And Coco Noir, uh, let me just get the web, coconoirwine.com and get some of the wines that you just heard. So um, Alicia nice. and Mari, thank you so much for being on the show. And um, yeah, I really wish you success. I feel like, I feel like you're going to be successful. Um, you've got it. So. 
Thank just you. appreciate you and um, wish you lots of luck. Yeah, we're excited. Thank you so much for this interview. And, you know, also for those of you listening, uh, get on our mailing list just so you can just stay up to date on what we've got going on. But um, thank you so much for allowing us to be here and share our story. Thank you. Next Economy Now is a production of Lyft Economy. To listen to all of our past episodes, visit www.lifteconomy.com. You can also subscribe to this podcast in iTunes, Overcast, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. Once again, thanks for listening.